But first, we can't have a good warm up without proper breathing. So, can I have Paul lie on the floor, please? Okay. <laughs> I didn't warn him ahead for this. Sure. Whatever. Right. Like on my back. On your back. <laughs> okay. Now. Don't fall asleep. <laughs> I'm gonna have you lie down there for a little bit. Oh, this bit. is nice. <laughs> <laughs> so when we're running, when we're exercising, yeah. we usually breathe like this. Right. But when we're singing, it's a completely different ballgame. We're supposed to breathe like God intended us to breathe. So, sorry. <laughs> See how Paul's breathing? This will be automatic for everyone when you're lying down. The stomach goes out as you inhale, and as you exhale, the stomach goes in. So, breathe in. He has a big big gasp of air for all the notes he's going to sing. And slowly let it out. Let's do that again and slowly let it out with that Flat tire. So, this is a good exercise <laughs> to do. Um, if, you're, if you have a tough time singing long notes, uh, if you're, you know, singing, ah, and you can't get that long breath, you need to start practicing good breathing technique. And the, the way we can do that is just by lying down. This, this allows the muscles and the lungs to actually work how they're supposed to work. It's weird, but if you're in your room and you want to try this, it's... We want to think of our breathing patterns as like a balloon. We fill the balloon up. out. You know how balloons, um, you fill it up a bunch and then it slowly goes out, right? Unless you press it. With your voice, you don't want to press it. You don't want to pop it. You don't want to do any of those things. You want to let it out slowly. So if you are looking for that longer note, you do want to practice this. So let's all do it together. Breathe in and breathe out. <laughs> He's showing up. So another another important part of singing is posture. Paul, you want to stand up again? <laughs> Hope I'm not using you too much. Okay, Paul. Put your hands in the air, <laughs> and now let them droop. Keep your chest how they. Nice. Okay. <laughs> this is how you're supposed to sing. So everyone go like this. And then let it down, and your chest should be kind of firm, and you should be standing tall. Make sure your head is normal. Don't go like this. That'll make your throat push. We don't want that. But we want our singing to come out of here and out here. This is a good visual image. So uh, we want to sing from here. That gives us our gut. We want to use our chest, nice and strong. Even though it might look a little weird, it also just helps your confidence. So you can sit down. Okay. <laughs> so practice that. Practice your breathing. Practice your posture. Those are things that if you do that while you're warming up, I know a lot of people warm up in their car because that's all you have time for, but if you practice that maybe once a week or something, you'll really develop some better patterns. I, I kind of took some liberty and made four different levels of warm-ups. Because when you're, when you're waking up in the morning, <coughs> your voice is kind of like this. You're rolling out of bed. <coughs> you got nothing. It's like, oh. yeah, you can't just go, oh, all of a sudden, right? <laughs> I'll call those invasive. Or, does that work? In, or invasive warm-ups or something. So a non-invasive warm-up, when you're driving to church, do a and just use your use your lips, connect. Or you can do it. Those are very non-invasive. You know, you're not really using your whole voice. Uh, another thing when you're just waking up, <coughs> and I'll call this. 
some people call it the vocal fry. A lot of people, you know, are kind of iffy, but um, the vocal fries uh, and just connect some of your vocal cords. Uh, do you guys know how to do that? Kind of like a, a southern governor. Yeah. I'm not for governor, you know, something like that. Uh, that kind of connects your, connects your lungs or vocal cords on a very non-invasive level. So when you wake up, you can just... Uh, uh, try to sing a song. That's actually, that's actually going to warm up your voice and connect, start connecting your, your whole vocal pattern. So uh, I'll call those non-invasive. <laughs> Let's go to level two. I'll call this one more invasive, more attack. This is where we do five-tone scales. Uh, <laughs> we can start on different vowels like E, um, and that's called a five-tone scale. It just means you're da 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 just like if you're playing a C, C major scale on the piano. Do, 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 do. So after the ums and the uhs, you can start actually singing some notes and start connecting them. See, the, okay, the important thing about this though is that we want to connect our notes. <coughs> we don't want to re-attack notes. So <coughs> let's say I'm singing on, usually I will do different vowels, because different vowel, vowel stretch your vocal cords. So I'll go, ah, because they're kind of working different parts of the mouth, trying to get your nose in it, trying to get your forehead in it, trying to incorporate everything, because you don't want to go, you know, on stage or do some singing or something and have like a really strong like, yeah, but when it's you, know, you don't want that. You want to warm up your whole voice, um, if that makes sense. So, so we do the five tone scales, but the important thing to do is to connect your notes. That means you don't reattack. So this would be an example of reattacking. So, la. We don't want to do that. We want to make it a smooth connection. We want to make it like a sentence or, or like. We want to make it like, uh, that's a lot better for your vocal cords. Um, you're really warming up then. So make sure to connect your notes. Um, so you can do five tone scales with la la la, le le le, um, try different vowels, a, e, i, o, u. Um, also, you can try bubbles. This is my favorite, this is what I use every day. Um, Let's do it together. It's like that. And we're going to use that five tone scale again. We're going to try to connect too. So. Looks completely silly. So if you want to involve your family or if they're just going to laugh at you, you know, it's, it's just. It's hard to sustain it. Yeah. That's, it's really working out your, your breath and, and your, your lungs and your, your and voice. So, <laughs> it's too fun, it's too fun. So those are what I call level two warm-ups. I mean, you don't have to use all these warm-ups, but depending on how you feel, what you think is best for your voice, you always, your vocal cords are a muscle. So you wouldn't start lifting weights without stretching, or you wouldn't run without stretching, and there's really no difference. So we really need to respect our vocal cords. So a quick, <laughs> not going to be enough. You know, just one like calf stretch isn't going to be <laughs> enough. You know, you, you're going to you're going to have to sit there for at least 3 or 4 minutes really work on stretching it. Um, so we need to try to do that. That's, that way we'll become more uh, confident singers, we'll become we won't become as tired, our voice won't go out. Um, and I really need to do this too. I really need to practice. So I'm preaching at myself. Um, a level three, this is more, uh, more invasive. Um, so these are level threes. A siren. So how does a siren sound? So you, it's uh, very, very invasive. 
Um, so we want to take the low of our register and go to the high of our register. Ooh. And just try to take it as well as you can through the different ranges of your voice. You're going to go from chest to mix to head all the way down to mix to chest. So you guys want to try that? So you're probably not going to be able to do that when you wake up. You're going to hate yourself for it. <laughs> and it's not going to work. Uh, so it's good to get the level one, level two before you go to level three. Another one is over the mountainside. And this is just more range. And you're actually seeing words. So you're um, now you're starting to sing. So this is uh, this is this is also good after you do level one and two. So let's do that over the mountainside. 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 Okay, so pretty much go as far as your voice will allow. Don't strain it but go as far as you can sing comfortably with your gut and um, not feel any sort of self. That's the goal. We're not trying to work out our muscles. We're trying to warm them up. So you wouldn't like do 100 jumping jacks to stretch or 10 push-ups. You would just stretch out the muscles. So that's our goal here. Um, if this feels like you are straining, then you shouldn't do the exercise. Um, maybe level one, level two are better. So it's really up to what you're comfortable with. Um, level four is actually really hard. Um, the, the NG sound <clears throat> really tests your voice. So if you're kind of wanting to, to try that, uh, sing song, sing song, song, song. That's going to attack a different it's going to attack a different uh, part of your voice. So if you if you try singing up a ramp using song, so mm, mm, and singing it legato, that's going to really test your voice and see how well your chest voice, your mixed voice, is just a mix between your mix or and your your full and your head voice and your head voice. It's going to be connecting those very well. So if you're ready to go level four. We're going to go song. This is going to really help you singing with your head. This is one thing I, I learned from my vocal teacher in college. Um, a lot of times you try to sing with your, your gut, and then you, you start singing with your throat. Ah, and, oh, that doesn't work. Um, he taught me, because I'm a very visual person, to sing like over my head. <laughs> it's weird. But he also told me to think of a rubber band every time I'm singing. And that's all he would do. Think of a rubber band. And it improved my singing like tenfold. It was the weirdest thing. But this, <coughs> mm, this song will really help you connect the, the full voice and the head voice a lot better. So if you're, that's almost more of a workout than a, a warm up. But if you have a little extra time and you want to work on just expanding your, your uh, not your range, but just um, your connection ability, because um, that's important. You know, when you're, when you're in between two notes uh, and you're, you're, you're going high and you don't know if you can switch to your head voice, even your mixed voice, and you're scared that it'll be a nasty crack, uh, this will actually help a lot. So if you want to work on that, uh, song and concentrate on that. Mm. Pretty much just go up the scale. Song. And you can, you can use a piano for that too if, if you need to um, help guide your, your notes. Okay, so I'm sure you guys are a little more confident in warming up. Uh, just remember to do it. A little warm up's better than no warm up. A 
five minute warm up is very ideal, especially on a Sunday morning. You're rolling out of bed, and even in the shower, you know, that five minutes might take a longer shower, but um, it's really, really important. Um, that way, God forbid, you never get vocal nodules or something terrible that your voice just stops working. I'm going to go over with go over some techniques that we can just keep in mind when we're singing. A lot of singing is just information, and you just have to kind of kind of know it. And um, if you know it, a lot of times your voice is pretty much just going to react to the knowledge. You don't have to be thinking of oh, I have to be like this. And that. Like, it should become like a natural muscle, like you know, muscle reaction. Kind of like when you're playing guitar, it's like you don't even have to think going to an A chord after a while. Um, so the more you practice, um, the more you want to think about it, um, because singing is not about you know, thinking about correct technique, it's about emotion. Um, once you get the technique out of the way, you can use your voice for what matters. Um, but here's some correct techniques. So we don't want to sing with our throat. <clears throat> a, a way to see if we are singing with our throat is if our larynx is moving. If your larynx is, yeah, your larynx is going to go up if you're using your throat. So a lot of times you can kind of feel that, and if it goes up, yeah, it's going to go down. Um, if it moves at all, that means you're singing with your throat. Um, it's okay if it moves a little bit, but it shouldn't. Um, you should be singing right here from your gut and with your head, if you really want to think visually. So a good technique is to always mix your voices uh, to become more comfortable with your head voice and more like your mixed voice. Uh, my favorite thing to sing in is my mixed voice because that's where I have the best uh, technique because it's mixing my head voice and my chest voice. Uh, and if this is hard for you, it's good to work from your head voice down instead of your chest voice up. And does everyone know what a head, head voice is and a chest, chest voice is? Does everyone know? All know? Will it do you know? No? Okay. Um, so a full or chest voice, if you're singing, God bless America, it's, you know, it's your full voice. This is what you're actually, uh, this is what your main voice is. When you're singing, you picture yourself singing, that's your voice. Uh, a head voice is like, God bless America. That's your head voice. And falsetto. a mixed voice, falsetto, yeah. Um, head voice, falsetto, yeah. And then a mixed voice is kind of a mix between the two. Usually it's kind of um, in the middle of that range. God bless America. That's a, a mix of the two. Um, you can practice this by going higher, so, see right there, I crack, that's me entering into my mixed voice, and I would need to practice this song, to practice my, you know, descent, um, so there's three parts of your voice, and, you know, you didn't know this, but you use that, those parts of your voice when you're singing, you know, I, I've witnessed it. Uh, we all do. So to be cognizant of that and to connect them is our goal. Um, a good thing to do also is the sirens, is to connect those voices very um, consecutively, like one thought. That's a good way to practice. Okay. <clears throat> Never strain. This is something that um, we, we really want to always keep in mind our voices it's like if you are lifting 400 pounds and you're a little guy you could tell you know that guy's gonna like ruin his arms you know or if that guy is like lifting a car with his teeth you know you don't want that you're gonna break something <laughs> same thing with your voice we really need to be careful and be respectful um, of our voice because their muscles do they can you know they can break and deteriorate uh, another important thing is to never neglect your head voice. A lot of people say, oh, I, I don't have a good head voice. I don't want to do that. But everyone does have a head voice. And it, it might be lower than most people's. 
Um, but to connect with that head voice just in your warm-up time or your practice time is going to really, um, it's going to make your singing better when you're even just singing with your full voice. You know, you don't have to go on stage and, yeah, yeah, you know, <laughs> you don't have to do that. But <clears throat> if you have that practice, you know, when, when you're in your room, when you're practicing, when you're warming up, when you're in the shower, that's really going to benefit you in the long run. <clears throat> so another, another good way to sing with correct technique is to yawn. Sound weird, but <clears throat> if you yawn, that's going to connect your voice and also um, get you to you know, that, that mixed voice. So if you're ever thinking, okay, how do I connect those? Just go ahead and yawn a couple times, and you'll you'll almost be there. Um, and then do that practice. Then do the sirens. Then do you know the the over the mountain side, or then mm, um, a yawn always helps. So another note about the larynx: usually, the higher your larynx goes, the thinner your voice gets. Um, so when you're really using your throat and and uh, really singing with your throat, your voice is going to get thin. No one wants a thin voice. Um, it's like almost like those like poppy bands or the singer is terrible <laughs> because they're, they're singing with their throat. They're not singing with the, their voice, you know. Um, so we, we want to make sure if we're, if we're wondering, okay, am I singing right? Just go ahead and like feel your, your larynx. Is it moving a lot? Okay. If it is, then I have to really, you know, focus on singing with my my, my gut and with through my head. If if you're an image person. Okay, so those are just some correct techniques. Um, we got to get out of that solo singer mentality, and we got to think more like a team group singer mentality. Just like thinking that way is going to change how we sing. It's not about how we sound in this mic today, you know, how groggy our voice sounds or how tired we are, but it's how we're blending with our neighbor, the, the worship leader. So if we start thinking like that, our voice is going to change, or how we use our voice is going to change in, in the worship setting. They also mention adding breath to support your tone, um, so your voice sounds like the leader. That's important just to watch the leader, watch their lips as much as possible. Sometimes that's not possible with just positioning. But trying to watch the leader, trying to watch mannerisms, or whatever can give you a hint of when they're, they're going to the next verse or when they're taking their breaths. Like even if, if you see their stomach go out, okay, I should take my breath. When the leader takes their breath, that way we're gonna be on the same page, singing the same words on the same syllables. Um, <clears throat> So tone and breath, uh, they mentioned singing with too much tone and too much breath. Um, that spoke for itself, but it's pretty true. Sometimes we just go extremes in, in, the other dire in each direction. So yeah, the, the important part is, is the blend. Uh, we want to make sure every part is equally represented. Um, and we also want to make sure we sound like one voice. And even if it's a harmony, um, it doesn't mean harmonies are bad or anything. But if we sound like one beautiful chord together, um, that's our goal. You know. Um, so the guy mentioned that we're not, we shouldn't be timid. We should be confident. A lot of times, as singers, we we get timid because we think oh, we're too loud. Like often, if our mics are too loud, we'll kind of you know crunch up and like keel over because you know we don't want to sing loud or we don't want to um, be the center often. Um, but we do want to be confident. If you feel like your voice is too loud, communicate that to the sound person. Um, but our goal is to be confident, to blend, and to be one team. So as if, if we need to do something to make that happen, um, we need to do that, because that, that is our goal. We also have to develop our ear to, to hear what our neighbor sounds like, their timbre, their tone. And that's why we're having the vocal teams, so that you guys can learn each other's tones and timbres, um, so that you guys can blend well. And oftentimes, you know, someone has a very similar timbre, or 
your voices just mesh for some reason. And that might be natural, but it can always be practiced and made uh, natural, if that makes sense. Um, if you practice enough with a certain person, your voices are going to start to mesh and you're going to start to sing like one voice. And that is also our goal. Timing is also important. Um, listen to that snare drum. Follow the leader's lips. Follow their breathing patterns. Whatever it takes, if you just need drums in your ears because you're having a hard time with timing. I have the drums cranked every Sunday um, because that's so important. You know, if, if Mark's playing drums, like I will have that bass drum so loud, it's like crackling my ears, you know, but it's, it's important because um, if it wasn't, you know, I, I'd probably get off time, you know. Um, so, you know, know your weaknesses and um, know what you have to do to, to cancel them out. Also, another note, they said something about instruments, having the, the leader's instruments there because there is a certain, it's like the basis of notes almost, like, if, you, if the piano's leading, you just got those chords, and that's a really good tool to stay on pitch to know, okay, at least I'm not going to sing a completely wrong note. I'm going to sing what the piano's playing. That's a good foundation to start your singing on. A lot of times we'll go, we'll kind of practice our note, like, and then sing, because we might be scared that the wrong note's going to come out, or we're in the wrong key or something, or in our head it sounds different. So there's nothing wrong with that. Just you know, go away from the mic and come back, and listen to that piano or that guitar or that main instrument, and listen to the leader. Something that can be distracting is listening to the electric lead guitar. Um, but that's probably not a good thing to be listening to if you want a foundation to launch your notes off of. Um, or like you know, some kind of lead instrument that's doing more harmonious things, not very melody-driven things. Uh, and melody being like, how great is our God? And they're just playing, doom, 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 doom. You know, just melody, um, just the central chords. And then the electric guitar is going to be doing something like, doo, 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 doo. And they might be in the scale, but Wait, they might not again? be. Is that? Your chest voice? Or, um... <laughs> no, I saw it coming over the I, think, I, think, it was okay. I think that's head voice. Right? Yeah, but I might have been. Or listening to the bass. It was my guitar voice. Yeah. That was your guitar voice. voice. Oh, there's a fourth <laughs> part of your voice. I didn't know that. Or listening to the bass when you're singing. But I listen to the bass when I'm playing because I go yeah, along. Exactly. Right. And that can, yeah, that can be that translatable oh. to instrument playing. And, um, if, if, like, you're the acoustic guitar and the electric guitar is throwing you off or something, and there's no reason just turn you to down. have it. Yeah, just turn, <laughs> it turn you off. Um, or like even the bass, like if you don't need to hear the singers, um, why would you need to hear the singers? You could, sing, you could hear the leader and the drummer, mm -hmm. and that would probably be the best way to stay on time and do your job. Mm -hmm. So, you know, know what you need um, mm -hmm. to do to succeed. That's exactly what I do. I, I yeah. listen to the drum, and I listen to you. That's all I need for the, yeah. for the tempo. Yeah, yeah. perfect, yeah. So yeah, learn what you need, and um, that's gonna. If you get into the swing of things, you start feeling comfortable. That's when you can really grow, and you can really sing out. Because um, a lot of times, we hold back our, our real voices because we're timid, or because we're um, not hearing the right things in our ears. It could be a number of things because we don't warm up. But the voices God has given us are, are beautiful, and if we can get those out of our our bodies, you know, that's that's a, a goal we to have. So I like I like the song Your Name and how they I like how they built the dynamics for that. They all sang melody for verse one. And the background singers were kind of soft behind Paul. Paul was definitely leading. He was definitely the, um, the forward voice. Um, they started harmony on the chorus. And they I think they did two part harmony on the chorus. Mm -hmm. And then they did a stronger melody on the verse two. I think they came up with um, three part harmony on the second, the second chorus. Um, so that's just an example of how you can grow dynamics with vocals. You don't even need to have the drums playing louder or, or the bass doing like a walk up. You can just do it vocally by uh, doing melody, then adding one harmony, going back to melody, and then adding two harmonies. You know that's going to be a lot of dynamics already. Um, so vocalists, we can add a lot to the sound. 
Another thing we should we should make note of because this is a very the roots of this church is very traditional, um, and what came with traditional singing is wide vibrato, um, and we need to be able to distinguish the two. Um, wider vibrato and kind of more modern, thinner vibrato. If we're wanting to sing in the modern context, like Paul Balash songs or Chris Tomlin songs, our voices need to be kind of a flag in the wind, you know, just the tiny ripples. We don't want to be like, because that's going to give us a more traditional song. How great! <laughs> See those? Yeah, yeah. Very much wider. Um, and because it's a traditional church, we're probably, we probably grew up with or we're probably used to singing with vibrato. A lot of people who are born in a very modern setting don't even know how to use vibrato and have never explored that because they've always been taught to use a straight tone. How great! You know, it's, it's very hard for me to even sing with a straight tone because I'm used to singing with vibrato. Um, so to train yourself to be in the middle somewhere, to have a healthy balance of vibrato and straight voice, um, that's where we want to be. And to use vibrato in the right places, you know, maybe at like, how great, like on that great, and make that great sing, uh, but sing a straight tone on how, just little things like that, um, that that can spruce up your voice and make make your voice sound prettier. Um, so, yeah, so we shouldn't use vibrato everywhere, or else, you know, it's gonna sound more like a choir song, which is fine. There's nothing wrong with a, like a, a hymn or a choir piece or a song, choir song. Um, but if we're going for modern worship, it's just a different style. So we want to use more of like a, an in-between um, vibrato style. And again, listening to the leader and how the exactly, leader's Exactly, yeah. It. If the leader's doing it a certain way, yeah, you really want to yeah. try to copy them. Um, and even if they're doing it, the, uh, you know, copy them. Because if that's what they're going for, then yeah. you know, that's what you need to emulate. So, so it's all about following leader a lot of the times um, and to, to be a backbone vocal, but to be confident and to really, you know, put your two cents in, but, but not to even see it like that, just to be a team player and to contribute to the, the union voice, the one voice. Another, another good point is vibrato is just like, it's like an effects pedal for a guitar. Um, the tone of the guitar itself needs to be pretty before you put the vibrato on. It's not something that makes your voice sound better. It's almost like, you know, uh, like spraying a, a place that smells bad or putting a, a Band-Aid on a deep cut. I mean, that's just very surface level um, covering that up. It's not gonna really do anything. We need to make sure our acoustic voice what's really just coming out is, is the best possible. That's why a lot of the guitar players invest in amps and all this stuff so that the original sound, the sound that if you just go clean through the amp, sounds amazing. And then if you add like a pedal, that's just accentuating that sound. Um, so don't go straight to vibrato if you're working on your voice. Um, just work on your voice that's natural and then put on that effect after you, you're satisfied with how that sounds. <clears throat> cool. Um, another, another way to see how your singing voice will be, like a template, is your speaking voice. If you're speaking like this and you're singing like, like this, you know, that's, you're probably doing something wrong. Um, your speaking voice should usually match your singing voice. So that's another way to just to see if you're on the right track, if you're, if you're singing in the right register. Um, cause, that can actually happen, you know, you can get used to singing in a register that you're really not good in. Like, that's not what you're meant to sing. So, uh, another thing that they mentioned is matching the tone with the theme, the voice of the song. You know, they were singing Your Name, which is a more reflective song, but if they were singing like, I am free to run, you know, it'd be a different tone. It'd be a different um, style or theme. Um, so that's good to think about too, when you're leading worship. And that, that applies to everything, your presence, your mannerisms, and your smiles. Like, if you're singing a song about you know, the cross of Christ, you know, it's probably not a good song to smile or to jump on. Like, 
to be you know, excited about. That's kind of a song to really reflect and to be grateful and um, almost a somber song. Sometimes we just have to make our voice match the theme of the song. If it's a like, the victory of Christ, if it's a happy day, we're going to be <laughs> smiling and jumping and raising our hands, you know. Um, so we do have to remember to match our, our voices, our bodies, because uh, we're singing with our bodies, we're not just singing with our voices. Um, we have to remember to match to the theme of the song. Uh, so you guys with instruments at home, uh, especially pianos, are very helpful with this. Guitars, though, are okay. Uh, pianos are really good because they're the exact notes in order that you're supposed to sing. Uh, so let's go over a little bit of a little bit of, little bit of health because it's it's a it's a long road of getting better and better at harmony. Uh, I put this into two levels as well, kind of like the vocal warm ups. First level, uh, this is what they talk about: harmony. Harmony is basically forming a chord. So if you're playing How Great Is Our God, and that starts at the C, da, 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 um, the guitarist is playing that chord, da, 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 at once. The melody singer is going to sing, How Great, and that, that melody singer is landing on that C. G, C. What you can do um, as the harmony singer is you can go a third above the melody singer. This is very basic harmony. Um, we can call it basic harmony. Uh, you can sing, how great, and you can just go a third above what they sing. Um, so if the melody singer is singing, uh, you can sing, uh, and then you can follow them. So if the melody singer, da 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 da, well, can you do that? Da. Are you going to do the melody and I'm doing yeah, the um, you do da 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 da. So he started on a third, which if you're on a piano, you can just do like a chopsticks thing, or you don't have to be like get a piano or anything. Um, but uh, can you sing melody for me? Da 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 da. So something. Uh, so going past basic harmony, we can we can practice these chords and everything. Um, and you can practice with your guitar, kind of like what they were showing us, doing the one chord, practicing a third above, which is if you're playing a guitar, C, E, G is what you're playing. If you sing the E, that's good. If you're singing the G, that's all basic harmony. Um, that's singing notes in the chord, or uh, notes that land in a chord. So if you're singing, um, like, it's going to be a song, so it's not going to be exactly what they did. It's not going to be that simple. It's not going to be that um, boring. But the thing is, if you land, if your last note or where you land in your singing is within a chord, that's considered basic harmony. Um, that's a good place to start out. But the second level is singing notes that don't exist in the chord. Uh, and this is what you get a lot with gospel singers. You get a lot when you're singing really modern worship songs. Um, and you're singing like maybe, you know, a different note than like the piano player would play or something just for dynamic range or something uh, so this is all about landing in a different in a different place like this is done with a lot of pop songs too uh, they land in kind of a different place like let's say the key the, key, the song is in C or something so yeah 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 that would be a very basic melody um, you're landing in those those chord, chordal structures. It's nothing um, out of out of the ordinary. But if you land on something outside of that chord, da 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 da, da um, that's that's landing outside of that one chord. It's a little more advanced. But the key is to kind of stick with it, and that's how a lot of pop songs are um, so catchy and everything. It's they kind of they take that scale and they kind of put a twist on it. Um, and another another way, da 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 da. So there's different ways you can you can sit on your piano. You can practice different ways. Um, but what we really want to be concentrating on is not the second level, but the first level of harmony. So. Um, 
So basically, all a harmony is is singing a note other than melody. So if if we're singing, um, your name is a strong and mighty tower. If we're just singing all that together, that's all melody. But if I'm singing any note other than that, I'm singing harmony. All harmony is is different. It's not a certain thing of notes, or it's not a certain thing. There's, you know, there's. There's a science to it, but it's not like you have, there's a right answer, if you know what I mean. Um, a lot of it is, is what kind of sounds good to your ear, and uh, practicing a lot. Like for me, singing harmony, um, I learned by learning guitar skills and learning how to play the blues, um, learning what sounds good over like a backing track. Do, 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 do. And I just learned, you know, and just kind of what sounded good. Oh, that didn't sound good. Um, so I started singing like that. I uh, started singing, okay, what if I was a guitar? You know, what if I was playing? Guitar voice. Yeah, guitar <laughs> voice. That's the fourth voice we learned. <laughs> what if I was that guitar and I wanted to sound really good on top of that backing track? That's kind of how I learned harmony. Um, a good way to kind of scientifically learn it is just to go on the piano and try those chords. If you just go up a C, C major chord. In fact, if you guys would come over here. Field trip. Come on. Get to see this actually done. Everyone hover around the piano. Don't touch nothing.
harder because uh, we really have to kind of duke it out and uh, almost write it for a song. Uh, but if we're trying to do a two part harmony, one of the singers is doing one melody and the other singer is doing harmony, then it's good to listen. And you can practice that at home just by doing chopsticks. It's, it's harder to find the notes because you're playing, well, often you're playing inversions or uh, more like solo stuff. You're playing up the neck or something. So often it's often just harder to find. Uh, but our goal is to find harmonies. Harmony is, is something that every singer strives to be good at. Um, and what we want to make sure we do is marry our harmony voice to the melody. Um, so we want to make sure, like, Whenever the leader, the melody singer, is singing or dipping, um, kind of changing a note, that we're doing that same exact thing. We're doing all the same mannerisms, just a third above or a fifth above, or um, you know, an interval above that sounds good. And a good, good way to do that is to to crank that piano up or to crank that guitar up if that's the leader. That's often, like we we said before, it's a good. Um, Good way to find yourself, find your voice. Um, harmony is really, it's, it's not something we can just read a book and learn. It's just a lot of practice and hands-on practice with a piano or, or a guitar, or whatever instrument you have. Another good way is to listen to recordings. Mm -hmm. um, That's if, what helps if we, Yeah, if we have favorite recordings of a song, or um, like Hillsong is a great example of this. Chris Tomlin, good example of this to listen for those harmonies, to find, okay, that person is in the alto range. We really want to listen to them. It's, okay, what are they doing there? Oh, they're only singing there. And, okay. And really just trying to emulate that. Uh, even with their tone, even with where they take their breaths. That, I mean, that's probably one of the best ways to practice, is just, just to listen to the music and to sing along with the singers. Um, so if you practice on your piano, a little bit of chopsticks, Listen to the recordings, try to sing with, you know, whoever's singing the harmony with Hillsong or, I mean, they usually have two or three harmonies, so, I mean, that's a really good tool. Like, try to learn the melody and the two harmonies. If you're able to sing with that singer the whole time, man, you're really going to improve. Um, so that's, those are some parts, um, some, some ways you can learn, learn harmony. Um, but yes, it's, it's really not something that we can just learn by reading a book. Or <clears throat> a lot of people are, are kind of born with it, and that's a struggle too, because a lot of people aren't born with it, and they have to work for it. But I mean, it, it's, it's really important to be able to be flexible, to sing melody on one song, to sing harmony on one song. Um, I mean, that's what makes a good singer, to be able to do what's needed to make, um, and especially in a worship setting, to make the song sound good so that people are drawn into worship, so we sound like one voice. And, and um, is, is stage presence. A big part of singing is stage presence. It's nothing to do with your voice, um, but it's how you handle your body on stage. You know, are you are you happy, or are you, you know, are you confident, or are you nervous? <laughs> you know, people can tell. <laughs> You know, the people in the chairs are not dumb, you know, they can tell if you're having a bad day and they can tell if, if you didn't have Starbucks in the morning or if you did have Starbucks in the morning, 
they can tell if you didn't get a full night's sleep, you know, you know, they can read all your body language. So when we're leading people, we have to make sure, <clears throat> we have to make sure to uh, embody the theme of the song and to lead people, not just with our vocals as what we're singing, but with how we clap our hands or how we raise our hands or uh, how we're worshiping. But another important part of that is not to get lost in your own personal worship on, on Sunday mornings or uh, on a worship night. It's, it's not often, it's, it's dangerous to close your eyes and start worshiping God, you know, kind of in your own bubble, like you would do in your own room, because you get lost and you stop leading the people you're trying to lead. Uh, the people need a leader, and that's why we're up there. And personal worship, is, it's just not the time for personal worship. Uh, and what I mean by that is it's not time to get lost um, in yourself, you know, in worshiping and kind of just like, oh, man, Lord, just, um, you know, I'm closing your eyes and, and just kind of losing this, stepping away from the mic and just kind of kind of losing it. And people can tell, and they're like, oh, like, they can't connect with that because they're not having the same experience with God as you. So you might have to push back sometimes and to say, okay, um, I'm leading, and that's why I'm worshiping God right now. I'm leading them, so my eyes are going to stay open. Um, that's like an important thing, especially like if you're praying or if you're leading worship. It's good to keep your eyes open a lot of times. I mean, I show with that so much. Um, but if, if you're leading a song and your eyes are closed the whole time, it's going to be hard to engage people, you know. Um, so things like that, it's important to, to remain present and to lead with your body and to open your eyes and to connect with the people because you need to get their attention and you need to, you know, say, hey, like this is where I am at. I'm worshiping God. Um, you should come here too. You know, you should bring them into the throne room. Um, but, I mean, often a way to do that is to is through your own personal worship. But it's not good to get lost in the worship so that you aren't leading them anymore. So it's good to find a balance, and it's good to find where that balance is so you can correctly lead people. Uh, because that's our job, you know. That's, that's why we're up there. That's why we're singing those songs. It's, it's to give God glory, uh, but it's also to, to bring those people and to, to lead them in so that they can give glory, too, with as, as least distractions as possible. So it's ministry. It's, yeah. it's the ministry. Yeah. Okay. yeah. And it's not about us. I mean, like, when we're up here, it's really not about our, our things and dealing with our things because, um, you know, God will deal with that on our own time. But we're up there because we're meant to be up there, because we're leading the people out here. Um, it's, I mean, a lot of people, a lot of times people get it backwards. It's, they think, oh, it's all about you. You're on stage, you know, the lights are pointing towards you. It's like, well, really, it's about, like, you. We're trying to lead you into selfless worship with God. And um, the only way we'll do that is if we don't get trapped in ourselves and, and what we're trying to feed in our, our personal relationship. Because, you know, we are one body. We need to sing as one. We need to, we need to guide each other in the ways of the Lord. So, um, stage presence is huge. And, you know, it does have something to do with the voice. Uh, to have a confident stage presence um, is important for a good tone and good technique. Anyway, so, it's all about balance, really. Um, Actually, I thought it was interesting, because when I led that one song last week, yeah. I did change my monitors totally, so I didn't uh -huh. hear you guys harmonizing. I mean, I could hear you. But I had to hear myself because of doing the leading part of it, and yeah. so I did. It. And I did, didn't realize it until he said that. But that's why I actually mm -hmm. did. Yeah. And it's totally different when if I'm singing or not singing how I use the avion. Yeah, okay. and that's cool because, well, those actually have, have uh, you can preset them. Um, I can show you guys how, um, but you can actually save the setting, and you can have like this on one, this on two, and all you have to do is like press two buttons and. There's your mix oh, cool. for if you're leading or okay. if you're background singing. Yeah. Or, you it's know. interesting though because yeah. I didn't know why I did it and then it really, yeah. 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 That's, that's that, I mean. One other thing that I do is I keep one in and I keep the other one out so I can get 
both yeah. so ends you get, you get the going cool on so that the... I can hear, because I want to hear Lula, mm -hmm. so we can, you know, because I want to try to blend. That, that's the whole yeah. idea, to blend. So I want to make sure I hear it here, and I also want to hear it up there. So I, I just keep one in sometimes. Yeah, that's, that's mm -hmm. good. I usually do that, especially for practice, to, to try to give the sound people tips on Oh, this is too loud, and it's too soft. Because what you're hearing, you're hearing in your ears is up to you. Right. You can change it, right. and that's probably yeah, not what the house sounds this. like. Yeah. yeah. So I thought it was interesting for that you were rehearsing out here. Yeah. So that you could hear yeah. the means. And then, um, yeah, and having the avion still though, um, because it's nice to hear the drums. Yeah. Uh, and to have that crank yeah, in my ears. Yeah, I need the drums. Yeah. Uh -huh. so. that, okay, and just so you guys know, if the drums lets me know if I'm to move around or not because yeah, if the drums that's, that's are big, drumming, yeah. that tells me, oh, you know, <laughs> that, that tells me. But when I don't hear drums, then I'm like, then I know I'm supposed <laughs> to just, you know, praise yeah. the Lord. But when I hear drums, it Mark lets me know when I can move or not. We don't know the thing, but it's just all thing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> if the drum is cranking, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's a good indicator. <laughs> that's funny. But um, okay, we're getting to the end. Um, just got to make sure we're in that balance, place of balance, you know. Um, obviously, we need to be worshiping God to lead people in worship, but it's not good to get lost in our worship so that we lose the congregation. Um, it's not um, good to have your avion so cranked on a certain level that you don't hear anything else. Um, you just want to have a balance. When you're singing, you want to have a balance between your head voice and your your full voice, you know, you don't want to be singing um, all in your head of voice all the time, you know. Um, so when we're singing, we want to think balance, we want to think in the middle of the road, and we don't want to think extreme. Um, we don't want to strain, and we don't want to sing too soft. Um, so, uh, uh, you know, that's a, a very good good thing to remember. <coughs> um, just a little note on the sound tick video. It's good to respect the sound guys. <laughs> What they're doing is often even harder than what we're doing. Um, and they're just as much part of the worship team as us. So uh, we got to respect them. And, you know, when we when there's something wrong with their ears, it's good to say, hey, when you get a minute, uh, and then ask, you know, if, if you need something. Or I know we have avions now, so we don't really have to ask them for monitor changes, which is amazing. But if, if you need something, you know, they're probably busy, like, doing something. Just to say, wait a minute, hey, um, if, if you have a minute, I have a question, and then wait your turn. And just make sure they're respected, because um, oftentimes there's one sound guy, and there's a whole team, and if the whole team talks to the sound guy, it's like, oh, they don't feel too good. Has anyone noticed a difference in the congregation since we got the new board and all the new decibel readings and stuff? Have you heard any feedback? From I haven't heard any haven't feedback. haven't heard negative feedback. Yeah. I think we've trust me when <laughs> before we got that decibel meter there was some feedback. Oh, yeah. So, you know, no news is good news. Basically. We've been yeah, we've been keeping it pretty low on the decibel meter and checking it every Sunday. We're keeping it about eighty two, which is um, pretty good. I don't know how we do it, but um, I think it's something to do with using different sticks on the drums and uh, just putting that master fader down. It's really you know, not blowing our older cars out of the water because you know that's important we don't want to I think it's very important yeah where it shows respect exactly mm -hmm. yeah, we're respecting them by respecting what it takes for them to get because we still want to draw them in yeah exactly because yeah. it's all about them you know it's yeah. not about what we want or, yeah. uh, what's cool it's about how is our church going to worship yeah. you know so if our congregation changes you know we'll change our style but right now that's our congregation so that's how we're going to lead soft worship, you know, and that's okay. <clears throat> About microphones. Um, microphones are what we need to sing on, you know, stages and everything. It helps a lot. There's different kinds of microphones. These are called cardioid microphones. Um, pretty much like the standard for touring musicians and for musicians. I mean, you can like throw this across the room and it won't break. Oh. These things, I mean, <laughs> I it, but um, these things really can withstand a lot of um, beating. And that's why they're 
these are probably the most, these are the most popular mics in the world. SM58s, Shure SM58s. Um, this is just a normal Shure SM58, it's called a cardioid mic. Um, that means it picks up all, like, the sound from here, right here. Oh, I often wondered. Yeah. That. Okay. Um, this mic is in a Shure SM58 Beta 58. This is called a super cardioid mic. It's, it's a smaller, um, it's like a, a narrower passage. These are a little more expensive. They're about twice as expensive as, the, as these mics. Um, and they're better because they, they pick up more of your voice and they pick up less of that. Okay. Um, so they're both really good. And for what we're trying to do, they're both going to work. Um, I mean, if it was up to me, we'd probably buy these because these are more for like, you're really trying to get a really clean, crisp vocal sound, um, like for a professional band or something, um, just to save money. But it's good to know what they do. Um, an important part of singing into a microphone is how you point it um, and how far you are from the microphone. I usually try to have my lips to the microphone mm -hmm. and to keep it there because um, that's like a good indicator. And if you're kind of scared of diseases, you know, you can bring them up white or something. <laughs> but it's good to have your lips either on the microphone, if you're comfortable with that, or to maintain a very consistent distance mm -hmm. between the microphone. Because, let's see, right here, I'm talking. <clears throat> I try to talk at a consistent volume. But if I take one step back, you can barely hear me now yeah. through, the, through the maze. You can hear my acoustic voice. This is not picking anything up. And I just stepped back three inches. Um, the more you step back, the more the sound guy's going to have to crank it up. And the more he has to crank it up, the more feedback you're going to get. Mm -hmm. So when you're right here, and you're giving the sound guy a lot of signal, that's, that's our goal, is to give as much pre-mic signal, um, which is, this, that's the signal that goes to the board. Mm -hmm. They're having as much to work with as possible. Um, it's, even like a guitar amp, like if you have your guitar amp at like half volume, um, that's not going to be the best tone for the guitar amp. It probably has, with a tube amp, it's probably best at like tone three or, or volume three. That way you're actually using the whole amp. Um, and the same thing is with acoustic instruments like our voices, we want to um, deliver that sound at a consistent rate and at the most at the most volume so that they get the most pre-mic gain before they, they re get, get to the board. Um, that way they don't have to push what's called the post gain. That's when you get into feedback. That's when you're, you start to blow your amps. If you have a lot to work with, you don't have to do much on their side. They have a lot to work with. They can turn you down or up, um, and they don't have to start like, jacking levels up and, and doing things that are going to hurt the system or even hurt people's ears. Because if, if the sound guy is mixing from here, and he has you cranked, and you know, you're singing like this, and it's a great song, and then, you know, woo, and then you just like belt something out really close to the mic, everyone's going to go deaf in the conversation. Um, but Going if you're here the whole time, they can get a nice level volume, and you can sing, and you can go crazy, and there's nothing wrong with pulling back, like, yeah, there's nothing wrong with that, but... Um, it's also good not to pull back too much and stay there. <laughs> yeah! Keep singing like that. Um, you can do that if you're singing a really high note or a really loud note, but always go back to that consistent um, distance away from the microphone. Um, because the microphones are really only as good as you, know, as you use them to be. Um, if you're singing like this, a lot of people don't understand that the, the mic picks up this. So. If we're singing like this, and the mic's pointing that way, that's not getting anything. I mean, you guys don't hear anything, right? And this mic doesn't pick up from the sides, you know? Um, this mic picks up a little bit more from the sides, so this one's a little more um, circular, because this, this one's a lot more exact. But still, we want the mic, the center of the mic, right here, to be facing our lips. Um, a lot of the times, Another way people will do it is they'll sing right here. They'll like sing with their chin there. And like sometimes they'll like, like touch it just to make sure they're in the right place. And that's fine too, because um, your voice is still, it's still catching your voice. Um, but if you really want a consistent sound, 
sing right into the mic, right into the center of it, touch your lips to it, and be consistent about it. Because uh, we don't want the sound guys to lose us. Because you know, our, their job is to, to put our sound through the mains so that uh, the congregation can be led. Inconsistency is distracting. And, you know, that's the thing we want to avoid is big changes in volume, um, especially feedback. No one likes feedback. Um, <clears throat> two more tips and we're done. Um, make sure to drink warm fluids and not cold fluids when you're singing in the morning. Um, tea is good, but honey, lemon, probably not. Uh, but like, sometimes I just drink honey water. That's good. Uh, stay away from acids and milk. Those can kind of destroy it. Try not to eat too much before you sing. Like, don't eat, like, you know, all you can eat pancakes at Denny's before you come to church. I'm not sure anyone does that, but. Uh, or don't drink, you know, a glass of milk before you come to church. Or coffee. Or coffee is terrible. Caffeine yeah. is bad. Caffeine is yeah. terrible. Um, no, I, I only drink a lot of water, yeah. but it's tap water, it's not cold. Oh yeah, tap water's no, fine. I don't, yeah. I never, yeah. 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 You don't have access to your water. tea, you need something yeah. warm. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, but I do drink a lot of tea and lemon. That I think. Yeah, uh, coffee Wait, is, that soda or coffee in the morning, oh, yeah. and that's yeah. never good. Yeah. But don't drink that. And a lot of times, actually, the day before is um, more important. Uh, to stay hydrated the day before you're singing, like if you know you're singing on a Sunday, make sure to drink like a gallon of water on Saturday. Or if it, that's, a, that's probably too much for you guys, but that's how much I would drink if I'm singing <laughs> on a Sunday, it's like a gallon of water. That hydrates your vocal cords um, so that on Sunday they're hydrated. Because if you drink a gallon of water in the morning, um, they're not gonna be hydrated. You know, I don't know why it works like that, but it's good to stay hydrated the day before. And then the, the morning of, drink warm fluids and get the juices flowing. Do your warm ups. Mm -hmm. Do some jumping. Do juices. your bubbles. Do your bubbles. Yeah. Okay, guys. Um, thanks for coming. No one fell asleep, so I consider that a success. <laughs> that was awesome. So, thank, you. thank you. That was very good.